Hello, my name is Dan Speck, and today I'm going to do a quick start tutorial on Lucene.net. Okay, let's go. So, firstly, download um, uh, Lucene.net. You just Google it, um, you'll find the site. It's actually the um, second download, I think, the incubating one. This one. So, if you just download that and start on your file system, that's, that's where to start. Okay. And then, go to Trust Your Visual Studio, new project. Um, I'm already in the folder, I'm going to call it lucinenetvideo.demo. That'll do. Come on, Visual Studio. Cool. And here we have a simple console application. So the first thing we need to do is add a reference to Lucene.net library. So if we add a reference, come on. Just go up to the lib folder, which is what I prepared earlier. Come on Microsoft, you can really make this better. Come on. So lib Lucene.net um, library. Cool, and now we've got it referenced. So first things first, uh, let's say console.write line. Hello, Lucene.net. We'll assume that's going to work. Okay, so the first thing we need to know about Lucene is how it stores things in its um, index. The index being the sort of the file that you end up searching. So I suppose you can think of an index somewhat like a database, um, where uh, the database would have its what MDF file in SQL, I suppose, um, and then you have sort of rows and columns. Lucene has the index, and then it has documents and fields. The thing that's very different between um, Lucene's index and SQL is that it doesn't have schema, so you can call it a document database or a NoSQL database if you want to be really fancy. Um, so let's start by creating a document. I always go with a uh, car example, so I'm going to create a Ford Fiesta document. It's going to be a new document, and I'm just for sharp I'm going to import it. So we're now I've imported the Lucene namespace, and then we've got Ford Fiesta.add. Let's create a new field. Okay, I'm going to call it ID. Um, one is going to be the ID, and then I'm going to say field dot store yes. So store this field in the Lucene index. Field dot index dot not analyzed, which means I don't actually want to run the Lucene analyzer on it. I'll get to exactly what that is a little bit later on. Okay, let's add a new field again. Let's call it a make which, uh, unsurprisingly, is going to be forward. Uh, field.store, sorry, store, yep. And field.index uh, uh, analyze. So note that, that we're going to analyze this one, but we're not going to do the other one. And let's uh, have a model as well. Okay. And uh, there it is is Fiesta. Alright, just so we've got something to actually search, I'm going to basically just copy and paste that. Maybe I'll copy and paste it the old-fashioned way. Um, and I'm going to have a Vox of Astra. If I can spell it. Okay. Let's give it an idea of two. I make a voxel, a voxel, and a model of Astra. Excellent. So now we've got two documents, a uh, Ford Fiesta and a voxel Astra. Um, so what do we want to do now? Right, so firstly, we need to sort of be able to create the Lucene index. So we need to add the documents to the index. Before we can do that, we need to create a directory uh, where we can store the Lucene index. Thank you. So we want the Lucene directory in this case, not the normal one. That 
that's good. Um, and if we do FS directory, sorry, FS directory, dog open, uh, new directory info, environment, current path, or current directory, um, and then Danny Mac keyboard. Okay, just so we know, you know, I suppose it'll end up being the bin directory we're going to create um, a folder called Lucene Index, and in that folder or in that directory is where we're going to store the files that compromise the Lucene Index. Right, and now we need an analyzer, which I alluded to slightly earlier. So the analyzer is what does the um, analysis of the text that is stored in the Lucene index. There's various different analyzers. Um, oh crap. Thank you. Um, there's various different ones. I'm going to use the standard analyzer. You see there's a stop and a simple analyzer. There's more than that. You can download additional ones. Um, but these are the simple ones for example. That's not the right version. Uh, underscore two nine. I can't see what we've seen. Okay, I might just have to do using version equals we've seen net dot uh, details. Okay, so we're going to use the standard analyzer and we're going to give it Lucene 2.9, which is the current one at the time of videoing. Right, so after we've got that, we now need a writer which will let us write the documents to the index. So if I create a new writer, an uh, index writer, um, and then I give it the directory. The directory, the analyzer. Uh, true, we want to create the index if it doesn't exist. And uh, max field length index writer dot max field length dot limited. That should do. Okay, now we simply call writer dot add document and we give it for Fiesta. And we do the same for the voxel Astra. Okay. And then we just have to, we can call writer to optimize. This should make it faster to search, but I don't, it's not necessary, but I suppose it's nice to do it. And then we just close the writer because we have finished writing. Okay. And at this point, if we run this, we will have created a lucene.net index. Um, we just haven't actually searched it yet. I'll run it just to make sure. All right, you just, <laughs> I don't think you probably saw that, but trust me, it's created the folder and it's there. Okay. Now let's um, in fact let's put console dot read line so it doesn't abort instantly. Okay. And now let's start searching our Lucene index. So, unsurprisingly, to search the Lucene index, we need a reader. We had a writer, now we need a reader. Uh, index reader, good name. Um, index reader dot open. And we basically want to give it the same uh, location as in the directory that we had earlier. Open it in a reloading mode, no one's writing to it. Um, and we create a searcher. Search. We import the searcher. And searcher. And we give it the same directory again. Okay, we give it the index, sorry. 
So a searcher needs an index reader. So the reader just simply reads and the searcher does the slightly more intelligent thing of search. It's not that bad. Okay. Then we need a query parser. So this is going to parse the query that you would type in to uh, the search box if you were to make a you know, searching web application. Then we've seen two nine. Um, sorry. The F is the field, so we're going to search the make field, and um, the analyzer. We're going to use the same analyzer. It's important that you use the same analyzer to write the index as you do to search. Otherwise, you find it just won't work as well because you're basically, <laughs> I don't know, you're. You're creating the index using one type of analyzer and then you're searching for it using another. It's just, <laughs> they're not just, they're not going to match up. And then we create our query. So we say query parser dot uh, parse. I'm going to hard code it in. I'm going to search for forward. And then I'm going to say searching for query. So we know what we're searching for. Okay. Then we get the top docs. Result docs equals the index search dot search. This is actually essentially doing performing the actual search. We give it the query. Always good for a search. And then you need to say how many uh, documents you want back, basically. So I'm going to say the maximum number. I think whenever you start, um, sorry, whenever you start doing this, I think it's a bit confusing. You think, well, I want all of them. Why would I only want a few? It's done for performance. So, you know, okay. So that performs the search and returns us a load of hits, basically, as they're called. So if we save our hits equals result docs dot um, score docs. So they're in a scored order. And then all we have to do is a simple for each. I'm going to put hit. And then I say var document from search uh, equals index search dot doc. Doc, doc. So it's an integer address that we're returning back and we're just pulling it out of the searcher. And then we say um, document from search dot get um, make. So we're going to basically just write out uh, what we found. Document from search dot get model. Okay, and now let's just run it. Here you go. We found, searching for Ford, we found a Ford Fiesta. And if we search for, hopefully it's better, right? Voxel, we find our Voxel Astra. And that's really it. That's the simplest sort of intro I can give to Lucene.net. There's an awful lot more that can be done. Lucene is extremely powerful and it's open source, so you can really put, dig into it and see how it works. But yeah, um, if you want this sample code or the links to Lucene.net and uh, the project I've used here, it will all be on the accompanying blog post. Thanks very much.